morning, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Unlock Show. I'm Tracy Wilson, and it is my absolute pleasure to be here with you guys today. Today, you are in for an absolute treat because I have got an amazing guest with me today, somebody who has been a former network TV show producer. She has been on some super iconic television shows. She's been in the background of all of them. So working in New York, she started back in New York, working with the uh, iconic Regis Philbin when she was hired to produce his hit show, and uh, was which was live with Regis and Kathy Lee. She went on to produce ABC TV in Los Angeles and E! for entertainment television. Her interview assignments have taken her around the world from like the likes of Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii and the Arctic Circle in Finland to Hollywood red carpet events. So, oh my God, what an amazing background and story that I know that Marianne has that she's going to share with us. I'm going to be unlocking all of these insider secrets today on how you can actually get yourself onto some of these hit shows. How do you get yourself seen and you know, actually booked to be a guest on some of the best shows in, but not just in America, but all over the world. There are certain secrets that you need to know that only an insider can share. Hence the reason that we've got somebody like Marianne with us today. So huge big welcome to you, Marianne. I am so excited to have you here on the show and uh, going to be sharing all of your insider secrets. Welcome. Thank you for having me today, Tracy. I'm so excited to be here. You are very welcome. I'm excited to have you here because this has been a topic that we've been speaking about. I did a, um, a series a few weeks ago called The Authentic Brand Effect, and it's all about actually creating your own show. So today is more about how do you get yourself, how do you create that influence and authority by being, and brand awareness by being on somebody else's show? But not just, you know, we're not just talking anybody's show, we're talking some of the big guns. So let's kind of get stuck into this. Let me, let you, I'm going to let you tell us about your background and how you came to be doing what you're doing today. Well, I, um, I had a rather uh, haphazard way of getting where I was as a, as a talk show producer. I, I graduated from college and with my fabulous degree, went to New York City with a thousand bucks in my pocket, thinking, OK, I got my college degree. I'm going to get this fantastic job. And I could only get hired as a secretary. My first job was at MGM UA. Uh, home video, uh, MGM Studios, UA, um, United Artists. And I uh, struggled for many years because it was, I, I couldn't get a, um, a high paying job. You start at the bottom. And it wasn't until I was in New York for about five years and put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into volunteering on student shoots, et cetera, that I actually got my first big break. And in, um, and then finally, uh, I got a shot at Regis and Kathy Lee. And it was my first job as a producer in as many jobs. You hire someone who may not have great experience, but you know they can do the job. You have, ex you have confidence that they're going to do well. So I was kind of just thrown into the deep end and just said, swim figure it out. And so that's kind of what I had to do. So I'm not that much different than experts on the other side, trying to figure out how to get on the inside. I just learned the um, all of the secrets that um, really made a good show, but it didn't happen overnight. It happened over years of experience. And, you know, I, mean, I love that story because, you know, you're talking about you had to start somewhere and just getting your foot in the door and then being able to prove yourself and work your way up obviously landed you in a position where you were then exposed to all of these insider secrets. And now with the programs that you teach, you're actually teaching people how to do this on the, from the outside and how to actually get in and be, be a guest on a lot of these shows. So firstly, I want to talk about, you know, why do you think it's so... Um, why would anyone want to do that? Why would somebody want to be on on a show? Uh, well, the reason there are many reasons, mm -hmm. but the main thing is that um, I like to. Um, Richard Branson says that no amount of um, a front page ad can't do as much for your brand as a uh, as being featured in an article can. And also no amount of advertising can give you the credibility that being featured in an interview can give you. You can do brand awareness with advertising, but when you're featured and interviewed, you get credibility. 
And it's, it, depending on the show, even if it's not that great of a show, you get instant credibility and then you can leverage the clip from that show into your sales funnels, your website, um, your social media. And then people, it's not just people, anybody can be on social media. Anybody can do a Facebook Live, but not anybody can be on TV. And that's why it's so special, even though TV is still, you know, kind of going the way of uh, social middle media in some ways has become more popular, but p media, um, the news clips that you get from whether it's a CNN, ABC, CBS affiliate, or wherever it may be, gives you a lot more credibility than being on a Facebook Live. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. So in terms of like, um, you know, producers actually looking for people, why do producers need experts? Why do they need people to be on their shows? Well, the deep, dark secret of every producer's life and just the, oh man, uh, what, we, what we hate is trying to fill airtime and coming up with cool ideas on what the show is going to be about. And we absolutely rely on getting fantastic pictures from experts so that we have um, great, a great show, whether it's some, an author pitching us a book whether it's a chef with a new recipe or they have a new book or a new show or somebody promoting something that if, if you look at how the, the history of talk shows, it's all about plug away and they all rely on getting pitches from either experts, their publicists or other um, entertainment companies, because I know a, a big part of what I did was promoting movies and TV shows. And, um, and then of course, books, like I mentioned. And so um, that is, the number one reason why they need experts. They have 20, now we're in a 24 seven news cycle. Mm -hmm. um, the daily, their daily shows, they have five hours of airtime to fill each week and they need ideas. And so what would happen is I would go through, um, I would just scan magazines, I'd scan newspapers, because um, when I was doing talk shows, this was a wee bit before we had online access and could get that at our fingertips. And I would come up with ideas uh, that uh, either I was, or I was pitched from a publicist. And so with that, I would use these ideas then to go into our pitch meeting because we would have a pitch meeting once or twice a week regarding the next week's show. We'd have special meetings for pit, um, for sweeps weeks. Um, we are four sweeps weeks um, in a um, in a television season that you have to be aware of. That's going to be harder to get your story on the air during sweeps because that's when we're going to be booking wall to wall celebrities. Um, those sweeps times in America are the uh, November sweeps, the Febu the winter sweeps, which are February, and then the May sweeps. Those are huge. And why are they huge? Because the ad dollars that TV shows get are based on the ratings that they get during those sweeps times when Nielsen is measuring the audience. And so that's why you're going to find the best programming during that time. That's when you're going to find series finales or season finales in May because that's when you're going to get the um, the highest ratings and because that's how they're going to be basing the um, what they're charging ad revenue for the next season. Mm, those are great. Um, that just in itself is a great tip, you know, and saving people a lot of time if they're pitching at those periods and wondering why the heck am I not getting, I can't even get my foot in the door. One of the things that I want to, I want to cover because I know that this is something that a lot of people struggle with and it's that word expert. So, you know, we talked, we just spoke about producers need experts for their shows. Let's quantify what an expert is because a lot, particularly in the entrepreneurial space, in my opinion, there are a lot of experts out there, but they're just not known, but they don't necessarily see themselves in, as an expert. So at what point would a producer or a, a show host see them as an expert and when would somebody be ready to be on a show? Well, expert is an interesting word indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I get that I, I have seen experts being booked on TV or somebody I just saw recently booked on TV and he's a great guy. I would never have booked him as an expert, but he is doing gangbusters because he sent out 500 emails on a, a topic that I felt was soft, not something that I felt could cut through the clutter. And yet with no contacts, he's been able to cut through the clutter and get booked. 
I can tell you I would never have booked him as an expert. So that, but he goes to show you, and I don't want to give too many details because there's, you know, it's a small world in the verse and I, I'm excited for his success. However, you, if, if he can do it, you can do it. Well, there you <laughs> there, go, guys. There was an expert I also saw, and I can't remember, he was on a major cable network, and he was only six months out of college, and they booked him as an expert just based on his degree. Now, those are not the standards I would hold as a producer, but there are producers out there that just say, hey, if you can talk and be articulate and have enough knowledge about this topic, then sure, we'll book you. But it's more than just um, about your expertise. It's how you share your expertise. So if you're in, uh, for example, you might have just been in real estate for a year, but that doesn't mean that you haven't learned a lot in that year. So you can take the five biggest things that you've learned, turn those into the five biggest mistakes that people make when buying their first home and boom, you're an expert. And if you're in a local market, they're going to love you even more because you have a fresh approach to what's going on in the real estate market. You um, local stations and local shows love to book local experts. And so you don't know, and you don't start on a national show, you start on the local show. And if you can put a different spin on it, then you have, um, you have an advantage um, over just saying, hi, I'm a real estate expert and I want to come on your show. That's the number one thing you don't want to do. If you don't have a story and an angle, it's just like, why are you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to go down that path too. So okay. we'll share with people with the uh, people. We'll share these tips with everybody in a moment about like kind of how do we, how do you get a hook and an angle? But, um, you know, that's really interesting because that's exactly the same. Like if you think about, well, I'm thinking about the, the pathway that you went on to get yourself to a point where you were on, you know, a producer on some really high profile shows, it's exactly the same. You started at the local level doing something that maybe wasn't quite what you had in mind and you worked your way up. So this, this, the same process and thought process applies in this realm too, is just start at that local level and also just um, get yourself something that's proprietary. So coming up with like something that's unique to you, like you were saying with the five, you know, the five um, mistakes that people made or the five hot tips or how to get, um, you know, how to, how to stand out in a, in a crowded marketplace, you know, the five tips to do that. So something like that, that you can then go to a producer and market yourself with. Something that um, I suppose, you know, how would, in my experience previously, um, whenever I've been doing anything like this or whenever I've been like pitching for sponsorship, for example, I'm sort of seeing some correlation here. I've always done some research on what are the drivers that or the, the mission and the drivers that that particular business or station or whatever it is um, that is important to them. How do you find those out in the media world? so that you can relate to them when you're pitching your idea. And is that relevant? It's extremely well relevant because it's one of the number one mistake people make when they're pitching a show. They don't know the show. And I would get that a lot when I was at Regis and other shows where someone would pitch me something that was really for a tabloid show. And I go, do you watch our show? And oftentimes, most of the times they didn't. Oh, no, we don't have time because we're working for a living. Well, now, since you have the world at your fingertips, there's no excuse for an answer like that. I have a resource in um, my scene on TV system called the Ultimate Guide to TV Talk Shows. And it is a uh, the national shows. And what I have in there are links to all of the shows so that you can go to whatever website that show is on. And I have the national version of it. But if you know your local shows, look at your local shows online. See what kind of segments that they're booking. And um, if they're not, some might be booking something that's very different than what you do. So don't waste your time. Don't waste theirs. But if you see that it, there's a local show and you feel like there's something that there might be a good field piece for them to come visit you in an event um, locally, or you know that they do cooking segments. And so you, you're a local chef and you know that you can share your hottest recipe at your restaurant with them do you've got to share something that the viewers are going to want because the number one thing it's not about you it is about their viewer and it's uh, there's a there's something that i use it's it's it, this isn't the number one mistake um john f kennedy said ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I think that is an important um, quote because I say, 
Ask not what a talk show can do for you, but what you can do for that talk show. And what you can do, and I'm kind of going to segue, and I know you're going to ask me about this. The most important thing you can do for them is give them a story, a media hook that says details at 11. One of my favorite is a joke that they they did on local TV in LA for a while. And it's like something in your for something in your refrigerator could kill you. Details at 11. And <laughs> you want to hook them in so that they can tease your segment and that it's what I call tease worthy. And if your segment that you're pitching them is tease worthy, you have a 95% shot of being booked on the show. And you have the red and you have the cred and you have the expert credentials to back it up. Fantastic. I love that. Tease worthy. So let's, you know, in terms of p helping people to come up with their hook and then how to turn that into something that is tease worthy. Have you any, got any tips? I'm sure you do. Got tips on how they would do that. Is there a formula or a, like I'm very, I'm process driven, formula driven. Is there a formula or a way in which that we can, we can give them that will help them to do this really easily? Because a lot of people struggle with that. Um, absolutely. There, it, it's not necessarily a formula, but I can give you some ideas about how to find these kind of hooks and how to turn it in, uh, how to turn it into um, a hook for you. Uh, mainly, um, you want um, there are. I have thirteen irresistible story angles or media hooks that get booked on TV. Um, I can go over five right now that are real important. Um, first is the problem. That. Yeah. First is the problem solution. And the problem solution is kind of you, you never want to start with the solution or you're just kind of like, you might as well put a pin in a balloon. You've taken all of the excitement or the mystery out of what you're offering. If you just say um, new product does this. Yeah. Or new company solves this problem. No, you want to talk about the problem first. Uh, 90, um, one of them, let's say, I, I'm making up the statistic, but it's pretty close. 46 million Americans suffer from this disease and half of them don't know they have it. Okay. So that is a problem. And so the solution is to identify what that is and it's diabetes. Okay, diabetes, and I know the statistics are off, but I can tell you that there's a number and that only half of people are diagnosed with it. So many people are living with this silent disease. And so what you do is you take the problem and then you offer the solution. I'm going to say type 2 diabetes is, a, is like what that might be because type 2 di diabetes is something that can be solved without drugs. Type 2 diabetes is something that you may be in a doctor or a wellness expert and you have a program where you're um, maybe say every one of your clients or 95% of your clients come in and they follow your program and they, if they were on a medication for their type 2 diabetes, they're off of it in basically 30 to 90 days. That's a solution. So your uh, and your segment then is going to be saying what your program is because they're ultimately going to have to come to you anyway. And you're going to build credibility. And if someone's suffering from type two diabetes, they're going to say, I want to hire them or I want to go to their website and find out more. I want to get their online program. So whether you're local or whether you have this online, then you have a solution to a big problem. It could be a pet behavior problem that you have, um, that people have solutions um, or, or problems with. Um, is your dog taking you for a walk? <laughs> Find out why. That's a bad idea. Details at 11. And so if you're an animal behavioralist or an animal trainer, you can then do three tips, um, the three biggest mistakes people make when adopting a puppy and how to fix it right away. So, and that is, you know, just thinking of what are the problems people are dealing with? Maybe it's the five biggest cleaning problems. Maybe it's um, if they're a, uh, um, a weight loss expert, they'll have the five biggest mistakes people make with online diets. Whatever is going to create intrigue. Um, where do I get these ideas? Well, if you, um, you can just go online, like to Women's Day magazine. Um, a lot of the magazines online have these kind of headlines all the time. And you can use the structure that they use for their headlines to get you to buy that magazine when you're at the grocery checkout in the impulse rack. 
And those are the kinds of things that, those are the kinds of media hooks and story angles that get people to buy because if they get you to buy that magazine at the grocery store checkout, they'll get you, um, they'll get viewers hooked on your segment. Um, that is one of, that is just one of the problem solutions. So the next one is a ripped from the headlines. And ripped from the headlines is very popular right now because you know, there's a little story that's kind of like going on that's been going on since I don't know, first of March ish. And it's the COVID. <laughs> it's the 24 seven news cycle on COVID. So if your story has any way of fitting in with the COVID angle, and right now, it's so easy to do that. Because if you're working at home, you know, tired of working at home or need a been laid off from your job, here are five new ways that you can make money from home. You do have to kind of be careful with that angle or um, meaning that you don't want to sound a uh, real, you know what I mean? Schmaltzy. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. uh, I know Facebook ads have problems with work at home. So you have to be careful about how you do, um, how you phrase it. And then there is a, um, you know, whether it's doctors haven't been able to see your dentist because of COVID. Here's three easy tips you need to know now before, you know, you know, if you can't see your dentist for, you know, how long. So you take these, whatever your expertise is, you can find a COVID angle and it is literally ripped from the headlines. Now you could be an insurance adjuster or I'm sorry, you could sell insurance. And if there was a natural disaster, say a hurricane and there's 85, 95 million or multi-million dollar, um, you know, losses, then you can say what you need to know before the next hurricane, before the next natural disaster, and five tips for buying the best insurance policy. You, there are so many ways that you can twist and turn those angles. And those are um, the rip from the headlines are a really good angle. Then we also have our how to segments. And those are great for DIYers. The how-to um, or demo segments, those were some of my favorite to produce. I actually had a segment with Don Henley of the Eagles. Um, he um, is a real environmentalist, and I was pitched a planting a tree with Don Henley segment. Of course we said yes. <laughs> you said, hang on a minute. I'll see if I can find a spot for you. Yeah, of yeah. course we said yes to Don Henley planting a tree. And so that was, okay, so you, but it made sense because he was a celebrity who was an environmentalist. He wasn't a celebrity with no connection to planting a tree. So that is something that makes sense. Now, another how-to segments can just be, again, like a local chef with the recipe. You could be a local spa, massage therapy, um, you know, something or a local beauty spa. And you can come in with five, you know, three tips for, um, you know, getting, we don't get enough me time these days. Here are three tips ladies need because moms need to, you know, to pamper themselves to something along, you know, that line where it's a how to segment and you, you, you show how to, it could be an exercise segment if you're a fitness expert. Just also just think of ways to make something kinetic. You can be a medical doctor. Doc, Dr. Oz was awesome with how he made how-to segments into telling people, or I, I should say sharing um, with people the uh, um, the inside of the body so that you understood what was going on and why you shouldn't smoke, for example. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why smoking's a bad idea for your lungs? Because he'd show the lungs to you. So, and these pictures are worth a thousand words. Um, I've also done just fun things, um, five activities for the kids at home. Yeah, again, you could marry that with COVID. You can mix and match some of these media hooks. And we did a, I used to produce for a gal named Carol Duvall and she did a lot of craft segments. And we um, showed how to make these huge bubbles we showed how to um, do the mixture for it and then how to make the bubble maker so that when you um, did the bubbles, they, um, I mean, they were huge. They were like this big. <laughs> so we did a little how-to segments of kid activities and that was one of them and it was a huge hit. So those are the kinds, you know, the ideas are endless depending on your expertise. If you're a babysitter, if you're a nanny, there are so many ideas or, you know, mompreneur. And uh, those are just good for, um, um, how to segments. Now we have the negative tease angle. And this one's my favorite when I can get clients agree to, to agree to it. And the how to segment is a, I'm sorry, the negative tease angle is when it's kind of like that something in your refrigerator could kill you details at 11 kind of thing. 
you want it to be negative so they'll turn on and you know tune in and one of those again is the mistakes angle so the five biggest mistakes uh first home time buyer um, home or five biggest mistakes you're making at the grocery store that add thousands to your annual budget. I'm making that up off the top of my head. I don't know if you can produce that, but if that's a segment, that's the kind of thing. Um, the mistakes angle is something that's really popular. I had one I did for a client, uh, home remedies. Do they work? Mm -hmm. And they were an herbal supplement company. And so what we did then was not only talk about, yes, they did work, but we also had a, um, we had a medical, medical, um, medical studies that backed it up. So it's not like we're just going to say, yeah, you can take 10,000 um, um, IUs of um, vitamin C a day for at the onset of a cold and it'll cut the duration. No, we had a Cleveland clinic study to back it up, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not just, so when you have something like that, you can really enforce it because the, the stations, a lot of stations poo poo natural remedies, but then you come on and say, yeah, this is what you do. And according to the Cleveland clinic, this works. And then you can give them another home remedy and then you can back it up with another medical study. So you're taking like a myth, a negative story and you're turning it into, yeah, see, <laughs> it, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then my last one are just trends and fads. And that's good. Like you can have a trend and a fa you know, whatever is the most popular online businesses, the five most popular online businesses. Uh, here are five online fashion trends. You know, uh, the biggest uh, one of the um, my favorite is that you could do like a roundup, a product roundup. So they could be the hottest gifts for dad for Father's Day. It can be the five hottest tech gifts during the holidays under for under $20 or for under $100, whatever that is. And those are just the trends and the fads. And those, those are really good um, segments. So depending on like, if you're a local store, this is an excellent way, especially like if you, if you specialize in electronics, um, even if you specialize in foods, the hottest, um, uh, hottest holiday dinner foods, you know, if you have a grocery store, or whatever your, um, you know, even if you're like a, a local, Oh, I'm trying to think pottery barn kind of thing. You can take that kind of thing and then showcase your um, your cool cookware with the dishes. And you can say in all of this, these lovely cookware is available at Pottery Barn. And I'm just using them as an example because they're easy off the top of my head. Uh, or like these just come to you so easily. You just rattle them off. Obviously, you've been doing this a very long time. So I'm just going to wrap those up for everybody. So these five things, if I have got them all correctly, number one is the problem. So like really exacerbating what is the problem. And I and doesn't matter what it is, whether it's in, um, you know creating a business or, as you say, we're wanting to get onto a talk show. Most people don't spend enough time exacerbating the problem, like really understanding what the problem is. So I would say spend a lot of time there. Um, the next is rip from the headlines. So go and have a look at what are the headlines saying and utilize those. I've also seen that used as like, um, we used to call it news jacking. So finding a hot topic that's, you know, something that's hot now and then, you know, jumping on the back of that. The next is um, the how-to segment. So, you know, being, being able to, share your expertise and your knowledge in a how-to way is a great way of also being able to get on the shows and then the negative teams with the myths etc and then jumping on the back of trends and fads so those are five amazing ideas um, that i'm sure are going to have all of our viewers minds really really ticking and you guys should have some pens and paper out and be noting those down what i'll do after the show is i'll put this into a um document for you so you've actually got a worksheet if Marianne doesn't really help me. I'm getting a little okay. bit echo here today but we'll see how we go. The next question I've got for you which has actually come from a viewer is saying how much does your personality actually play when you get it talked? How much does your personality play? Mm -hmm. um, well that's a, that's a sticky wicket. <laughs> You, you can, uh, most people that, uh, the only person I ever knew that was exactly like they were on TV in real life was Regis Philbin. Regis had, and, and what was interesting, because Regis plays well on TV, but when he's, when you see that in real life, it's loud. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> 
but he has the same energy on TV that he does off, you know, offhand. If I were to talk like this in my real life, oh my gosh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, but most people are, they have their TV personality. They have their TV voice. It's like, I don't, I, I have more of my interview voice because I'm going to put more energy behind talking to you now. So you can be someone who's rather a quiet individual normally. You don't want to go on the store, on the show. It's like um, one of my best examples of someone who just refused to put on a TV voice is Ben Carson. Brilliant neurosurgeon, brilliant man. But uh, Ben Carson, he is, um, I think he's the uh, secretary of housing now for the US. But Ben has a really really low key demeanor. And you can see how if we were to talk in a more low key way, this would be a pretty boring interview, even if I am a neurosurgeon and I separated Siamese twins. You know, it, it, to me, that's very boring. But if he had talked more about what he was doing with more energy, that's what it's about. So you don't have to be the biggest extrovert in the world. You just have to put on a TV voice. And it's not once you start rehearsing and like doing role playing, um, you'll find that it's really natural. I know so many. I know a lot of people who are, you know, professionally on TV as spokespeople, not as anchors or hosts or anything like that. But the other the people who are experts, I've hired experts for years. And it's really about the energy that you put forth when you're on camera. And that same energy when we're in rehearsal or we're just talking, you know, we're not going to we're not going to have that kind of energy. Most people don't. It's rare. So you don't have to be um, Regis Philbin off camera. <laughs> God rest his soul. It was a sad loss for us this year. Yeah, that's sorry for that loss. I'm getting, I'm getting um, um, some echo, so I'm just going to take my uh, my audio here. For some reason, I'm getting a big echo. That seems to have fixed it. And I'm feeling a little bit like um, Albert Brooks in broadcast news with my. Uh... Yeah. Check that because we're normally okay, but I'm just going to test and just change my audio. And oh, hang on a minute. There we go. Hold on. We should be good now. Is that better? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can hear you good. It's my okay. end. There's something, I've okay. got some sort of strange echo going on, which is odd. I hate when that happens. We should hire guys for that. I know. It's like everything always goes smoothly and then boom, you know, that's that's the that's the world of uh, of live broadcasting, right? Stuff yeah. happens. Yeah, just roll with the punches, as I say. So I want to go um, now to... What sort of materials does somebody need to have organized? What things do they need to have organized to be able to uh, present themselves to a producer? Do they need to have a media sheet, media kits, um, an online presence? What should they have organized so that they are ready to go? Well, every producer is going to want to see video on you. For the most part, they're going to see even if uh, the local producers, it's kind of the local producer will want to see some sort of video on you. So if you want to just even create this, what the segment would be as a YouTube segment and then put it up on YouTube so that you can show the producer, but shoot it as though it is for a live TV show. Don't um, make sure it's the best it can be is what I'm saying. You know, you want to um, put the segment together beforehand. That's really helpful. It's not necessary, but it can be really helpful when you uh, you want to have a short bio together. If you have um, if you're a doctor, you want to make sure that you're having, you know, your credentials are there. I never booked a doctor without getting a copy of their CV. Um, they're like long CV because I want to know they're credentialed before I putting them on the air. And uh, if you're um, so regarding wh whatever your credentials are, if you have, you know, a couple of degrees or whatever that might be, and you're talking on something that needs that backed up. If you're a finance expert, you're going to need to let people you, you're going to need to know um, the producer's going to want to know that you have certifications. They're going to want to know what your degrees are, because if you're the expert in certain areas, it is. Um, criminal negligence not to have that backed up. If you're an attorney, they're going to want to know where your degree is from and they're going to want to know what degree you have. So uh, and, and so those are the kinds of things that you'll want to have as um, you want to have a professional photo. And if you're doing a how-to segment, you want to have all of your um, props together. You want to, most mm -hmm. producers, especially on the local, on the local basis are not going to put those together for you. That is something like if you're doing a how-to segment, you want to make sure that that is all ready to go. And sometimes it can happen fast 
and sometimes you're not prepared. So if you put a pitch out there and a producer calls you, um, it may be booked in the next three to four days, maybe three to four weeks. So when you put the pitch out there, you got to be ready to go with it. And mm -hmm. I always suggest that you have um, on your media alert, um, the media alert is something you want to write. It's got the media hook and then about two paragraphs of what you're going to talk about, then a uh, couple of, uh, I'm going to say four to five discussion points, and then a short bio, and then a way to contact you and the dates that you're available. Don't just say anytime, anywhere. Limit them. Let them know you're only going to be available on this day at this time. Maybe give them a week. Because if they think you're endlessly available, they're not going to book you not even as an evergreen. You need to kind of give them a timeline in which to book you. Urgency in some form of scarcity, right? Applies exactly. here too. Yeah. Okay, we've got a question from uh, from the audience here. Is it still true that TV producers actually comb the newspaper for guests who are in the news already? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they find that on online. And that's the, that's, <laughs> that's the sad thing about news media today. We have lost the real investigative journalists um, that were in the newspaper business. And the, uh, the sad secret is that producers have always scanned local papers and uh, magazines for ideas. We are basically parasitical. <laughs> <laughs> we that's where we go for our ideas. There are very few original ideas within TV. They're all stolen from the, the um, headlines and from local papers, national papers, social media. That has been the biggest new trend. I said, I can't believe all they're doing is like, look what we saw and found on Twitter today. You know, look what we found on Facebook Live. Look at this viral video. You know, that's look at where they're getting their news. Watch uh, GMA is notorious for this. Good morning, America. And I, I go, that just like, can't you do like a real segment instead of just showing us what's on social media? We are on social media. So we know it's there. Yeah, it's it's amazing to me that there are very few investigative reporters now and then real reporters, but that's where they're getting their ideas. And don't think that it's all they're also scanning online local as well. So any local um, that's up there and especially if something's gone viral, they're going to pick that up quickly. But if it's a good story, um, I know I was uh, we had this local story, huh, kind of got burned on it. Uh, anyway, it was a local story of this man who said he would pay 20. He was wanting he was overweight obese, wanted to lose weight. And um, he said he would pay $25,000 to anyone who caught saw, caught him eating in public. So I was told by our producers, I go, investigate this, look this out. Let's see if we can book this guy. And it's in a local paper. So. Mm. Well, there you go. So guys, some great um, tips and, uh, you know, resources that Marianne has shared today. But we've still got loads more questions. Like I want to try and get through this because there's so much oh, sure. value that you're adding today. So um, you also have here, like, how do we avoid it? So let's say somebody is their very first time and, we're trying to get on, you know, on a a, a, um, a guest as on a show. How do we make sure that you do not blow your first opportunity? That is really important. The, the guy I mentioned to you earlier who done a great job of booking three segments on various shows. He, um, oh golly, it, <laughs> it makes me sad. <laughs> It makes me sad because I work with my clients and my guests to make sure that they just hit it out of the ballpark and that their first time seems like their hundredth time on TV. And you can't just show up and think you're going to answer questions. You have to think about what your response is going to be so that you have responses, not reactions. You really want to work with the producer to make sure that you that three and a half to five minutes of TV is honed down to the best three and a half to five minutes it can be. And the way that you do that is that you rehearse it, rehearse it, rehearse it, but you don't want to seem rehearsed. So that when the questions are answered, it's a response. You know exactly what you're going to say and not, and here's the key, do not memorize. Memorizing will absolutely make you a bundle of nerves. You want to think about everything in bullet points. If you're a speaker, you understand this. You put up bullet points for a PowerPoint presentation. You see the bullet point and you start speaking on it. You don't, you don't have something memorized word for word. You use a similar format for TV and you don't want to be when you're going on there, you don't want it to seem like your first time is your last time. I mean, was your 
Your first, your first time should seem like your hundredth time. And the way you do that is to rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. One of the um, a talent that I work with a lot is Emily Kaufman, the travel mom, and this is her process. So it's a process, whether you have been on TV a hundred times, you still need to rehearse what you're going to say for that segment. Because even if you've been on TV a hundred, times before and Emily has made thousands of appearances she still rehearses every single interview so that she knows what she's going to say from the time they answer the first question to what's going to be her last statement yes absolutely yeah. so that you're not fumbling and you're not getting stuck and and, you know, and one way to do right. that's also media coaching because that's where I work with my clients because mm -hmm. I uh you there are things that you've probably even seen me do in this interview uh that when you're on tv you just don't want to do and like if you're working if you're doing a satellite interview or a skype interview right now that are very popular one of the things that people tend to do when they haven't thought about what they're going to say is they're not establishing really good eye contact with the camera and if they're mm -hmm. thinking about something, they'll look up this way. And that is not a good look if you're doing a, a satellite or a Skype interview. Mm, good point. Okay, mm -hmm. we've got some more questions coming through here thick and fast. Uh -huh. But when you're on, uh, people are asking you a question. So you are being interviewed, a question is being thrown at you. How long should your response be? And you got a that's, really strong three minute beauty. segment there. Yeah? What I, what I, my method, my formula is that those three to five discussion points that you send the producer are what are going to turn into your Q and A and your, uh, so that way, you know, exactly what the questions are going to be. And so you work on what those answers are going to be. And you have a flow of how, you know, you're going to answer those questions. For example, I did, I have a travel blog and I'm a travel producer with, I was a, produced in over 30 countries on three different continents for a television show. And so I did a prod, um, I did interviews on travel scams. And my first answer for every interview, no matter what it was, it's like, you know, everybody wants a great travel deal. And I'm certainly no exception. So I knew exactly what my first statement was going to be, even if they ask me a different question to begin with, because I could flow back into the flow of what I knew was the information had to be. And then I always knew my last one was my call to action. You know, I've talked about a lot of things here. You can find out all of this information on my travel blog and I'd give the address. What do you do? And I'm just going back. To, I, I remember years ago, I had some media training when I was um, in my corporate life and they talked about the slippery slope of media. So when you're being interviewed and you get on, I don't know if the terminology is the same, but this, is in, this was in New Zealand at the time. They were talking about when you're interviewed, if you are asked a really tricky question and maybe it's going to take you down a path that gets you on a really slippery slope that, you know, maybe takes you into some territory that you don't want to be in. How do you get yourself back out of that? What should you do to kind of br help bringing it back to the, the uh, subject at hand? Well, crisis communications is not my specialty. And what I can say, it's different when you're on a talk show that has a live format where they cannot edit your sound bites. I have a couple of friends that have had very bad experiences, and I see this a lot in our media right now, and it infuriates me. I would never, ever, ever, as a field producer, do an interview and take a sound bite and put it out of context, or cut it off short, or make the person look bad intentionally, knowing that I misrepresented what they were saying. So I may not be the best person to ask this. But if you do get asked a question, the one thing I know you don't want to do is say, I'm not here to talk about that. Let's talk about this. You mm -hmm. want to be very polite and, you know, kind of take a page from um, play, uh, Ronald Reagan's page book. Don't answer the question. Say something else. Mm -hmm. Great. So these are he, would, he would like he would take like if they ask him a question he didn't want to answer and he would say that's a very good question and he said and you know the sky is blue today and I just love the weather here he would like completely <laughs> go off and he'd do it with a smile and then by the time he finished what he was saying most of the reporters would forget that he didn't answer the question. Yeah, great tactic. I mean, there's a very big difference, I suppose, between, you know, a talk show and being interviewed on, say, the, the Daily News, where they, they are really, you know, digging for some juicy story or on a, a show like 60 Minutes. Very, very different. Yeah. So, and those are my, those are not, that's not my style. I mm -hmm. like happy news. And that's why talk shows are so much fun because for the most part, they're not going to, they're not hard news. They're not, and that's the, what I've stayed away from because I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable in, you know, asking people 
mean questions. Yeah, well, we we like the nice questions too. We're a, we're a nice show. So um, let's like we've gone. I've kept you on here for a while now, but I want to <laughs> like. There's so much great information here. Um, so I don't want you know. I want to make sure that we answer all of uh, the questions that we have and the bunch of questions that are coming through. If it's okay with you, we'll Absolutely. stay for a little bit longer. So guys, mm -hmm. we've got about five minutes more with Marianne. So if you've got any questions, I want you guys to you know shoot them through on the uh, the chat so that we can make sure that we get those answered. Um, one of the, I, I will come to this question in a minute. We've got a really good question, which I think we will wrap up with in a moment. But um, on your media sheet, so let's say you've got a, a document that you're putting together that you are going to send in. Should you have a couple of different, uh, I suppose, you know, keynotes or, or speaking topics that you would speak on, or do you normally just pitch one? What's the the general protocol is you pitch one at a time, you pitch your best, and you still want to have two or three ready to go. But if it gets rejected, or if you're not hearing back, you can try pitching it again, but you don't want to irritate the producer because if you haven't heard, if you mainly no news is no news. And you'll want you don't want to pitch a whole bunch at one time. That's really a bad idea. So you can have them in your back pocket, but each pitch should be individual and start with your strongest first, but have other ways to go about it. And if you've pitched them one thing, give it a, um, let's just say you pitch them in May and you may want to give it a couple of months before you try again. No is not permanent. It just means this isn't right now. It's not right for now. You don't, you don't know what um, things they're dealing, they might have a certain, uh, thing they're going for one week, but things can change in a couple of months. Yeah, absolutely. So no is not no. It just says no for right now. Come back later. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to wrap this up, but I've got a really big question here, I think, is, okay. which is where do you see the media moving over the next decade? <laughs> that is a tough one. Um, I, as far as most, I, I think local media is where you want to focus on because the, the national news media, a couple of my colleagues and I are just disgusted, especially in America right now. Uh, it's been so, it, it's so myopic and it's so distorted and it's so dishonest. But where you have a real opportunity is in your local. I, I've, I, I scan a lot of the local shows uh, because that's where I tend to book a lot of my clients. And the local shows tend to still have the interest of the community in mind because those are their key viewers. They know um, that that's you know, where it should be. I pray, <laughs> I pray that the media comes back to the Society of Professional Journalism Code of Ethics because it is so off base right now. It is scary. Well, here's hoping. And I don't have a crystal ball in the next 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's hoping that is the case. Look, I, um, man, everybody's saying, well, stay longer. You know, we've got um, loads and loads of questions. But for those of you who do want more of Marianne, let's tell them where they can find you, Marianne. So where's the best place for them to go to continue the uh, conversation and relationship with you? Well, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, my uh I just Marianne Schwab. I'm Marianne Schwab in Los Angeles. And I also have a scene on TV guide that has all of my insider secrets and it's at broadcastmediaguide.com. And all of the, a lot of the things I've talked about, like the story angles, the hooks, the ultimate guide uh, to national TV talk shows, it's all um, there for you uh, for a very reasonable fee. <laughs> Well, there you go. Go get it, guys. I mean, I would love to see that our viewers, particularly those members who are inside of the Success Secrets for Business, Family and Life. Guys, this is one way that you can really start to elevate your presence um, in, in a big way and build yourself an authority and obviously influence by being on other people's shows. If you can get yourself on television, on some of these big name shows, you know, start small, but the pathway, I mean, I see a lot of people saying, I want to be on Ellen or I want to be on Oprah right off the bat. So that may not necessarily be the way to go. Start small, work your way up. And once they see that you're, you know, on bigger and bigger publications and being screened on bigger and bigger um, shows, then you're more likely to get a, a gig on a, um, on a, on a main, you know, on a, on a major show. Absolutely. Absolutely. You start local and then national will find you. Brilliant. So before I wrap up, I'm going to give you an opportunity to say, is there anything else that you, because I'm sure you've got some other gems there that you want to share with everybody before we, um, before we let you go and get on with your evening? 
Well, I think that you just really want to focus on uh, what I want to leave you with is the number one thing that will get you booked, even if you don't have the best expert credentials is the media hook and the story angle. That media hook is why is what's going to get producers attention. It's the slug line that's going to be in your email. And that is what's going to make them open up the email before they even know who you are. And then all they're going to want to know with your um, media hook is, are you credible enough to present the information? And whether you have a blog, whether you have a degree, whether you have six months of experience, but you you have an incredible story, like I went from uh, broke to you know six figures in six months, then you have something that you can present to them. You can be a college dropout, um, how a college dropout went from zero to 10 figures in, I'm sorry, eight figures, is that right? Right, from zero to $8 million in three years. That was one of my clients earlier this year. So it's like whatever your story is and your media hook, that's what they that's what they book. Brilliant. Well, I wanna say thank you so much for being on the Unlock Show today. Your expertise in this area, are, I mean, you've got a wealth of knowledge and you've just really you know, unlocked all of those secrets and you've shared an immense amount of value with everybody. And I want to thank you very much for doing that. We've, we appreciate it because I know a lot of our viewers are very much in the space of wanting to get themselves seen and building their influence and their authority. And now you've got a now they've got a way to be able to go and connect with you and get some more information on how to do that. So thank you very much for joining us. And I hope that we might even have you back again you know, sometime next year. And uh, there may even be some of our viewers that decide that they want to work with you and uh, we can follow some of their journeys. Thank you so much, Tracy. I am just thrilled that you asked me to be on your show. I'm glad that you came. Hey, guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Unlock Show today. I know that that was like a super value-packed show. Um, I know that you're probably going to need to go back and just re-watch it again. Uh, but we will have this available inside of the Success Secrets for Business, Family and Life group. Marianne has also dropped some links in here that you're uh, able to go and grab some of the freebies and some of uh, the material that she's got available that will help you with uh, with gaining, you know, gaining yourself some exposure on some of these major shows. And I'm going to be back again this Friday. Please do not forget last Friday, I had a task and an activity for you to do. We were talking about how do you uncover and how do you, um, you know, move forward if you're finding that you're getting resistance regularly. So we did a, a uh, activity around your values. Please make sure that you get inside of the Success Secrets for Business, Family and Life group. Download that document. You must do the exercise to ensure that Friday's session with me is going to be of value to you. It's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be playing a bit of a game and you must have your let's call it homework for want of a better word, have your little activity and your task done so that you're ready to go on Friday. So please make sure that you do that. If you do not have it, make sure that you jump into the Success Secrets for Business, Family and Life group. Tag me and I will make sure that you uh, are, you know, that that particular worksheet is available for you so you get immense value on Friday. But for now, guys, I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you again, same time, same awesome channel on the Metadime channel. And uh, we'll have another amazing show on Friday. See you then. Bye-bye.